Hi there guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to talk about how to calculate your U value um, find out the thickness that you need um, according to your U value um, and how to calculate the U value um, for PIR, insulation or cell effects or ecotherm um, or Kingspan or that kind of thing um, and then some of the kind of tricks and tips of uh, how to install it and um, what things you need to consider like both control layers and um, installing electrics and things like that. So I'm going to start off with the ceiling and we've got, um, in this case, we decided to do installation between the joists and under the joists and we did that because um, if you just did between the joists it meant using a, a way thicker um, insulation. Uh, we would have to use something like 220 millimeters, which is far less available um, which means that we wouldn't be able to get um, economies of scale on the product and it would have been more expensive. So what we ended up doing was 120 millimeters, and then between the joists, which you can, these are, this is a border trim, but the joists are this kind of thickness. So we've got um, 120 millimeter um, ecotherm insulation, which is pretty much the same as Celotex. Um, and then below that, we screwed in um, 50 millimeter um, cell tech insulation because just that's what was available and put some uh, screws which were 80 mil and a washer which is like a um, just a, a large washer with which with a 25 millimeter diameter which you can get from tool station um, and uh, an 8 millimeter hole in the middle just so that the uh, counterbalance screw can sit nice and tightly up against the um, the washer and not stick out too much so that when plasterboard goes on afterwards it will just um, sit nice and um, flat over the top and the, and the screws won't poke out into the into the plasterboard. So um, to actually figure out the U values, uh, the thicknesses that you need for new builds, um, you need to know what your U values are. And uh, in this particular case, um, my mum is an architect and she knows the building regulations for um, for this area and uh, in, in, I think it's pretty much nationwide the the u values on the walls are all the same for external walls um but we needed a u value of 0.16 the ceiling 0.16 for the floor and 0.28 for the walls um to meet the building regulations you can either call up an architect um, and ask them um or if you already have an architect doing um services for you and they already have um, given a building inspector to you. You can then just call up your building inspector and ask them what you value you values are required. If you're doing it DIY style, otherwise the um, um, the builder will talk to the um, architect and building regulation guys and actually know that for certain. Um, but because we knew what our U value um, was, we could then calculate um, what thickness we needed. Um, so in this in this case, we use the Celotex calculator, which is I'll put a link in the description, which is pretty good. And so uh, we use that to calculate for a construction of between the joists and below the joists, um, and there's an option there to do that. And uh, it tell it told us that we can use 120 mil about uh, between the joists and 50 mil below, and you can find out the cheapest. Um, just make a spreadsheet and find out the cheapest combination. Um, like for example, there was different combinations like 150 mil plus 20 mil below. It all depends on what how you want it to be, or if you just cost. Um, if you if you just want to do it based on the cheapest way possible, then you can just make a spreadsheet and then figure out how many slabs of insulation you're going to need, and um, just go for the cheapest option. And the cheapest option for us was 120 mil plus the 50 mil. I suppose because it's used more commonly and it's just more available, so it was cheap, the cheapest version. Um, we also used a website called um, directinsulation.com. That was the cheapest out of all of the installations in the UK at that at the particular time, which was about a month ago, and um, so it was February 2018 for those of you watching in the future. Um, so after that, you need to um, have a after the insulation you need to have a vapor control layer on a cold roof construction this is a garage conversion so uh, we've got a cold flat roof um, and um, which requires a vapor control layer which is called VCL usually 
Um, but all these acronyms, you know, you have to Google them for ages and you don't know what it is. And then, oh, what is, so now what product do I need? I need a phaser controller. Oh, there's a silver one. You know, there's just normal plastic one. What's the right one to use? I actually found out that the vapor controller could actually be the aluminium foil itself. Um, but that was after purchasing the um, damp proof membrane, which is just polyethylene sheet. And um, I decided, from my from my personal point of view, that it would not seal the room properly um, to just use the vapor controller uh, as the aluminium foil because you have to put um, aluminium insulation tape between these uh, the, the joining lines of the insulation. But there's a slightly oily residue on the insulation sometimes, and, and that means you have to degrease all of the joins, um, and, and that just uses a lot of solvents, and I'm, I don't like using a lot of solvents, um, just because you have to wear a mask and breathe it, and it just becomes uh, quite irritating um, to do that kind of stuff so it's up to you uh, what you decide to do but um, yeah I decided that the aluminium tape wasn't sticky enough and it kept on peeling off so I went for a thousand gauge um, just damp proof membrane which is a polyethylene sheet that is usually used as a damp proof membrane for the floor so I just used the same sheet for the floor I'm going to use the same sheet for the, the walls all on the inside and the purpose of the damp proof membrane is to stop the, the steam from the room um, going through the insulation and settling on the inside as condensation of the uh, the underside of the OSB board that is on the roof because eventually it will rot through um, if the steam from inside from either the shower or the kitchen or whatever um, gets onto that um, cold roof so you can see what we've got here is OSB board uh, sitting on top of um, the fur room and then on our um, um, the fur room is there sorry and then the joists are here um, and so that will eventually rot and then the roof will sink if it gets too wet um, so that's the purpose of that and um, let's move on to the walls now because um, oh actually just to just as a finishing point, um, as a service gap for lighting, I've actually put um, little battens here because if you end up cutting into the insulation, it stops it from um, being as thermally insulating and also it's, um, it's not nice to breathe in. So if you're cutting away at it, you can get in your eyes and and um, blah, blah, blah. And um, if you've got a lot of load going through the cable, when you're turning the lights on and off and, it get, and the cable gets hot the insulation will just continue to it won't have um, any space for the cable to cool down so unless you cut, cut quite a large hole but then you're losing thermal capacity of the insulation so what I decided to do is put a service gap here for all of our <coughs> wires that are going to be used for lighting to just thread through and um, and then the fast board will go directly on top of the joist uh, sorry the, the uh, battens so that's what I've done there, and uh, so this is in this particular case, but you may decide to, I'm just trying to give ideas on um, what you could do for your own. Um, in On the walls, we've got um, 100 millimeter insulation, because the U-value calculator um, on Celesex website just um, decided to spit out the fact that we could use <coughs> 100 mil, and so uh, we've actually got 100 millimeter studs here as well in thickness, so it just came out pretty convenient that the to get a 0.28 U value um, with insulation between the stud walls, um, the studs, um, and these are these wood wooden things are the studs. It's it's called stud wall wood. If you um, if you if you didn't know that, if you're a complete novice, um, and what we've got here is a breathable membrane on the back. Uh, to follow the building regulations and that's just I think it's a bit pointless to be honest because um, the breathable membrane is usually used on the top of roofs when um, you've got tiles on there and then if you get blowback of of water up through underneath the tiles it's to stop the water getting in through the roof then afterwards um, but you don't really need it on stud walls on the inside but that's just what it was um, so 
so we don't get it rejected by the building inspector. That's just what we've put there. Um, and then after that, on the inside, so you're supposed to have this on the 50 mil gap, and then breathable membrane. Um, and then on the inside, we're going to have the same as the roof as here, which is a vapor control layer. Uh, all over the inside of the walls. And then on the floor, we have another, um, this is now in this situation called a damp proof mem um Yeah, it's the same again, a uh, damp proof membrane. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for this because this is the cheapest thing I could find. Um, don't buy it off uh, some building website because eBay is the cheapest <laughs> place to buy a damp proof membrane. You're going to get it. For some reason, you can find, even from um, actual companies that are selling on the website, everything is cheaper on eBay, pretty much. Uh, building products are really good on eBay. Um, so this is a 1,000 gauge black um, vapor control um, damp proof membrane. It doesn't matter what color it is. You can get it in green, you can get it in blue, um, but black is made more often than any other color. So. Might, might as well get black, it doesn't, you're never going to see it anyway, so um, so I use the same stuff on the ceiling, the floor and the walls, I haven't put it on, all on yet, but um, I just put it there to make sure it's on top of the studs, the stud walls for the um, bathroom unit, and yes, on the floor, the last thing, uh, this is the hardest one to calculate, um, because on the U-Valley calculator you need to um, give a P over a ratio calculation. I didn't know what that was at first, so I tried to Google it for a while, but there's, so, there's lots of generic PA formulas, so I eventually found out after Googling for quite a, a while that it's perimeter over area um, calculation, and it's actually the perimeter of all external walls, and in this case, all of the walls are external because all of the walls are facing cold air to the outside, and that might not be in your case if you're doing an extension onto your house um, because you might just have three walls and then your perimeter is going to be a smaller number um, than I will have because I've got all external walls so in my case my perimeter is 30 meters and centimeters and my area the floor was 50 so it was uh, 30 divided by 50 which gave me a 0.6 p a ratio p over a ratio and you need that for the calculation. Um, so that spit out the a value uh, and a value, the value that I needed, which was 100 millimeters of general application Celotex. And I found out that that general application Celotex was exactly the same as Eco Therm Versa 100 millimeter. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I bought the this Eco Therm 100 mil. Stuff. and what I'm going to do is create a, uh, a floating floor uh, with tongue and groove chipboard which is the easiest way to create a, a flat floor uh, with which will hold a lot of weight um, uh, if you're putting something like a grand piano or something really heavy you don't want to do that you want to make sure that you've got a solid floor maybe liquid screed it but ask a, uh, a builder or a contractor or your architect or, or something like that if you really need a solid floor for something heavy or you're creating a gym and you need like heavy heavy stuff <coughs> um, uh, on top of it but if you're insulating you're just doing you know it's just general purpose you can put kitchens on top of it um, whatever any anything really um, it's just called a tongue groove floating floor and you'll need that for the calculation as well um, but the cheapest way of doing it um, and I'm doing this on, on a budget um, is to have the insulation sitting on the floor, make sure the floor is completely level first, this is a concrete slab. Um, <clears throat> you can level it off with something called, um, if, you, if it's not completely level, you can level it with something called latex floor levelling compound and just spread that into areas that need to be filled um, because that will, that will glue properly to the concrete. You can get that from Travis Persons or Wix or whatever. Um, I haven't had to do that because I just checked my floor with a laser, a laser level um, and it's pretty level across 9.5 meters. There's about um, 30 millimeters difference between the back and the front, but the floor is pretty much level um, left to right, side to side. 
So um, I'm just going to say that's fine because it's not going to affect the squareness of cabinets or whatever, whatever is being put in here. And um, sometimes you just need to make those decisions. Um, so that is it, I think. Um, if you have any questions, please do write a comment. I know what it's like when you're doing a self build. Um, you spend most of your time on your phone researching and that delays you significantly. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Smash that like button if you did find it helpful. And um, I'll see you in the discussion below and help you out if you do need any, any um, additional information. Uh, and I'll put links to all the products that I've bought. Not all of them are online, so um, and you can find out most of them just from uh, Googling the words that I've said. Other eco firm, firm versa, um, general application, Stellatec. This is just polyethylene, uh, thousand gauge, damp proof membrane. Get that on eBay. Uh, and these are um, just treated buttons you can get from somewhere like Allsford or Allsford Timber or Charles Perkins or whatever. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I'll I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.